Hello everyone, thank you for having me here today at QCon for the presentation Keeping Pace with Java. Let's get started. Uh, my name is Mark Hoffmann. I'm working with Java since the very first release 1.0 and I did Java projects with every release since that time. But for the context of this presentation, um, I would like to tell you what I'm doing today. Um, this is what I do um, during the day. Uh, these systems, as you see a screenshot here, manage railroad traffic. So railroad is actually um, a domain which is more than 150 years old. And this really sounds like legacy systems. So indeed, uh, we develop and maintain such systems um, for more than 15 years. And but actually these systems have a real business case and provide real value and they do work. So probably you are in a similar situation um, that you cannot just pick the latest and shiniest software tools and features and develop a new project every other day. Um, you work on system which provides some value for your clients, for your company and that need to be maintained in the long run. I'm actually interested about that. So um, how old is the software you're currently working on and what Java version are you currently using in production? So this is an example for me. So software is about 15 years old and in production we are with Java 11. Maybe you can add that in the chat and so we get an overview. So what is um, the current situation of you and we have a nice starting point for the discussion after the presentation. Um, I do more things. Um, I call it what I do at night. Um, I'm involved in some open source projects. Probably best known is the Chacoco code coverage tool. Um, with that tool, you can uh, measure coverage uh, provided by, for example, the unit tests and uh, create such reports. Uh, it's very popular in the QA, QA area. And while well, it works on the latest Java versions, and this really looks like a nice technology in a nice, nice playground to adapt to the latest technology and the latest features in the JVM. But let's have a look at the reality um, about the new and shiny open source projects. So the projects I'm working on are more than 10 years old. So Chacoco, um, I started 10 years ago and the Eclipse plugin, the code coverage Eclipse plugin, which was based on another tool before, is already 15 years old. So these tools have seen quite a few Java releases. Um, Actually, this is the build matrix for Chacoco. Uh, currently, we're supporting Java 5 um, up to Java 17. So all these um, JDKs are actually used in our build pipeline um, and the integration tests are run on these pipelines. So this is a situation when you develop a library. So there's basically two different kind of software projects. Um, you might work on a product uh, or a project specific solution and here you just pick the runtime um, that fulfills your requirements best and you run on a specific runtime version only. If you provide more a tool or library um, you have to support multiple runtimes because you don't know your clients and your client might use your application uh, with different runtimes. For the context of this presentation um, I will focus on the first one. So. Assuming you have a large application in production and you want to regularly update them. So here the question is first, why do you want to update your application? And second, how? Let's have a look at the why. Um, with new Java versions, we get new useful language features and new APIs. This makes you more productive and you want to use that. Uh, to get a better code base, a cleaner code base, and to be more efficient in development new features and maintaining your code base. Um, second, there's a lot of bug fixes and security fixes going on. So you want to have a maintained release of Java um, that you get these bug fixes and security fixes. There's new platforms. I have an example here, which is very popular currently. The ARM architecture, the new processors. You might know them from the Raspberry Pi you're playing with. It's a really nice um, platform to learn. But um, also in production, we will see it more and more. 
Um, most notably the recent release of the Apple M1 processors for the new laptops. Um, we now have Windows 10 on ARM architecture and on Amazon the A1 instance types are also based on ARM and getting more and more popular because they provide a really nice um, ratio between uh, power and price so they are really cost efficient so probably we will see more and more, more and more applications deployed on ARM architectures so we need new JVMs new runtimes for that that already support this architecture you won't get that for Java 5 um, we probably depend on quite a lot third-party libraries and from time to time we need to upgrade them and these libraries also have like a minimum requirement of Java runtime so um, we need to update our runtime from time to time then we can also update the libraries currently I did uh, some research on the Maven Central most of the latest releases of the libraries have Java 8 as a, as a um, uh, baseline so no panic yet Java 8 is around since uh, more than eight years so there's no issue to uh, th th so there's um, a good point to be at least at Java 8 and Java libraries um, do not like quickly adapt to Java 11 whatever um, they run on the runtimes but um, you're not required to update to Java 11 immediately but be aware most of the libraries are now Java on Java 8 if you're older than Java 8 you might get in trouble with updating them yeah and of course uh, we want to be happy developers and we want to learn and work with the latest stuff so it's a good motivation to have a, a modern runtime in your development environment in production so let's have a look at the main part how do we update um, here this is the re this is a release uh, schedule in the old days of Java so what we see here is a major release every couple of years like two years and here was a huge gap um, between Java 6 and Java 7 this was the time in Oracle by Sun this has been like five years in five years we have not seen a single new language feature or a single new API we are stuck with Java 6 in between these releases there was nothing there was just silence so you won't get some preview features you won't get some incremental updates it's just um, that you wait a couple of years and all of a sudden you get a new version this has changed with OpenJDK. With OpenJDK, the new schedule, which started with Java 9, is now that we have like a um, new release every six months. So two releases a year uh, on a constant uh, cycle. And But when we look at the life cycle of the releases, we see most of the releases um, only are maintained for six months. And in between, we have long-term support releases. Um, the current long-term support releases are Java 8, Java 11, and the next one down here will be um, Java 17, which will be released this autumn. So, actually, the schedule is still the same. Every couple of years, we get a major version with a long-term release schedule. But new, in between, uh, we get intermediate versions where we can already test and adapt to the new features. So what is a sustainable update strategy? Um, first of all, um, really make sure you have a supported JDK in production. Currently, we are on Java 8, and Java 8 will probably be supported for a couple of more years. So there's really no um, reason not to update to at least Java 8 um, if you're running on Java 5 or whatever. Um, uh, this is a very general advice. I mean, you should have a clean code base. But in respect to the Java runtime, um, take care about deprecated APIs. Um, with the recent Java versions, the deprecation annotation has been extended by a new attribute for removal. So if for removal is set to true, this means that there are serious plans to remove that. And this already happened. So if you choose to ignore deprecated APIs, one day, your code base will not compile anymore because the API will simply go away. So take care, take an eye on that. Um, the other thing is um, internal APIs. So there was a kind of bad practice to rely on internal APIs, the ComSun or Sun packages, and they get now encapsulated with the Java module system. Access to them gets more, more and more hard. So 
um, you will get warning first and later with the next versions you will not have access to these internal APIs anymore. So avoid them. Um, there's typically no reason to rely on uh, internal APIs. Use the public APIs and the Java packages only. Um, if there are warnings, runtime warnings by the JVM, printed to the console, uh, printed to the log files, really take them seriously. They typically give you a hint that you're using internal APIs, that you're using deprecated uh, JVM parameters, fix them. Because, as I said before, one day it will break. Update your tools. So, um, the tools, um, let's say IDEs, build tools, they did a pretty good job to catch up with the latest Java version. So if you update your IDEs, um, you will have no trouble to uh, introduce new Java versions because the tools will most likely support the latest Java releases. And also update your dependencies. So also your third-party dependencies might use internal APIs or deprecated APIs. So Typically what they do, they release updates from time to time and also clean up their code base. So um, to have problems with your third party, to avoid problems with your third party dependencies, um, please update them from time to time. Just make sure that the library does not require a newer JDK version than you're currently on. But as said, most libraries are very conservative, like we at Chococo, we still work on Java 5 and most libraries on Java on, on Maven Central um, are fine with Java 8. Um, so when it comes to actually updating um, the runtime in production, let's say in a large system, um, you want to be safe. You want to make sure you don't break production and you want to make sure that in case something goes wrong, you still can somehow escape from the situation. And this is what I recommend and what we did several times in large production systems is to do it in two steps. So step one is um, update your runtime JDK. Test it, bring it into production. Um, make experience with that. Does it work? Does it fulfill your non-functional requirements? Um, do you get any problems? Do you see any problems? And only if you succeed with that, take the second step, which is update your development target. Compile for the new version, um, use the new features, compile bytecode for the new uh, version. Um, this looks like this. So if this is your um, your releases, uh, you will always f get first um, update your runtime JDK and then for the next release of your software, uh, if you're successful with updating the runtime, you also update your development and build chain. And this gives you a safety net. Because in case something fails at runtime during testing or even at production, you can always fall back to the old runtime and take your time to fix the problem. If you change development version at the same time or from the very beginning, um, you open up the gates to use new APIs, to use new language features, and there's no way back. So in case something goes wrong, you cannot just switch back to the old version that previously worked. So this is a conservative approach, especially for large systems, uh, where you can make sure that you're safe on the runtime side in production. And once you have that um, confidence, you uh, move to, you also move the development um, stack to the new version. I really recommend that. So what are the potential issues with updates? Um, the JVM changes from time to time. It has like hundreds of options, command line options, and these options um, change. They get deprecated, they go away. Uh, semantics sometimes changes a bit. Um, a great tool for that is the VM Option Explorer by Chris Newland. So have a look at that site. Uh, you can explore the options for every Java version and see the diff between two Java releases and this helps you to understand what might change in your production configuration and which um, JVM options you should consider to replace by something else. Um, during cleanup and modularizing the JDK, um, the OpenJDK team decided to remove some of the Java Enterprise APIs, uh, mostly in the Java X packages. And they simply disappeared from the JDK. 
um, something like JavaX transaction or Java XML bind. Uh, for example, Java XML bind we use a lot for interface um, for interfaces for XML interfaces uh, where we have uh, interface Java classes that are annotated with Java XML bind. You need to find replacements for them in Maven Central. So there's Maven Central. You will find the APIs and the implementation for all these packages, and you need to probably declare dependencies um, on these replacements to make sure your application runs with a newer version where this package has been um, replaced. This happened mostly with Java 11. With Java 11, um, all these packages have been removed. Um, the internal APIs you might have used um, get encapsulated and you get at least warnings in newer versions like Java 16. Um, by default, it will not work anymore. So the code will, uh, if, it will blow up. So once you start the application, you will get an exception. This class is not access accessible anymore and you're done. So take measure for that. Um, there's two options. One option is and do a static analysis with the JDEPS tool. The JDEPS tool scans your class files, your char files, and looks for dependencies on internal classes and reports that. So you can have a complete picture of your code base and see where maybe something is hidden, some uh, internal access. Um, the other thing is do it at runtime. So there's the minus illegal access switch with a couple of options, and one option is the debug option. The debug option will print a detailed report where in your code base, so at runtime, if it, it comes to the situation, where your code base hits um, an internal API, and then you can try to fix that. I told you about the non-LTS releases before. So the releases that are only available for six months uh, in between the, um, the major long-term support releases. So what should you do with them? So my personal recommendation is to actually test your software with them and identify potential issues early. Okay, so you will be prepared to see, okay, what problems um, my software will encounter. Maybe what APIs will go away, uh, what do I need to refactor, um, where do I use deprecated uh, APIs now. And maybe you also encounter some problem with the runtime itself, like you get a crash or you get some unexpected behavior. And this is a good opportunity to report that to the OpenJDK project so they can fix it. Um, what I do not recommend actually is to use non-LTS releases in production. Um, because this means you really need to be able to upgrade your runtime to the next LTS release or to the next um, development release within six months. Unless you cannot guarantee that, I wouldn't go to non-LTS releases because after six months, you for sure are on an unmaintained version. But it's a good opportunity with testing them to prepare for the next LTS release. Uh, one more thing, um, you might have heard about the preview features. So there's a new flag for the compiler and also for the runtime for the JVM um, enable preview. And this will get you access to new language features. So you can try out experimental um, implementations of new language features, of new JVM features and also um, on new APIs. So APIs which are only available with the enable preview flag. Otherwise you get a warning. And this is really nice to study new features and follow the implementation in the OpenJDK project and maybe also report feedback. But again, I not really recommend to run your production with enable preview. Um, these features are not yet finalized and they will, and they did in the past, they did change. So. The idea of the preview is to really get feedback from the community and actually work on that feedback and modify the implementation or the specification according to it. So um, if you rely on preview features, um, for sure you will have to adjust your code base soon because it for sure will um, change. So I think the time for the presentation is up. Um, thanks a lot for um, following so far. Uh, now we have 20 minutes to discuss about it. I'm really curious uh, to learn about your experience, um, the blockers maybe you encounter, or also solutions or advice uh, you can share here. Um, I think you can paste your questions directly 
in the chat and we will have a nice discussion here for the next 20 minutes. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Mark. As always, it's amazing listening to one of your sessions. You are one of my favorite speakers. And there are several questions and a lot of answers to your, your, your poll. So that is amazing. And I'm really happy that we have so seasoned uh, developers here. So I think we can start with the first one that was asked. Do you have any insights about how to keep up with the latest JDK when you depend on a third party component that it's not compatible with the latest JDK? So what is your advice or your thoughts? Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question. So first of all, my advice is uh, test early. So uh, what I said in the presentation, really pick up um, the the the, the um, development releases and, and be prepared so i mean typically these libraries are also somehow maintained maybe they are open source and if you pick up and identify the issues early uh, you have a chance to provide proper bug reports um, pro and maybe even contribute a patch or if it's a commercial thing um, notify the vendor early and then you have some time frame some headroom to get the library uh, fixed and updated until you, for example, pick the next um, uh, the next long-term release um, version. So basically, there's probably maybe some workarounds. Um, for example, if the a library uses like internal APIs, you can open that up on the command line. Um, but in general, my advice is test early and try to fix the root cause. Uh, we did this several times and it's amazing how many people actually use open source libraries and complain that they do not work in a specific environment, but especially in a commercial environment. I mean, it, it looks like there's a huge barrier that people actually contribute back and say, well, there's a little problem. Here's a reproducer. Uh, can, you have, can you please have a look? I mean, that's so easy, but I constantly teach people, especially in commercial environments, to do the minimum of contribution to open source environments and just report the issue. It's the first step you do. Yes, the first step, report it. You don't even need to fix it. Just provide feedback. And like feedback, give a producer, this is, this is the best thing you can do, and you don't have to dive in the code at all. Yes, yeah, submit a test case, like a small reproducible example. Yes, I totally agree with you. There is another one. Um, why stick with Java? For for that, we are going to have in the panel, and we are that's one of the questions that we are going to ask with Simon and, and Kay. But I also want to know your opinion. I mean, why Java? We we are Java people, but now I try to. I always when it comes to technology, I always try to avoid a fanboy. Um, <laughs> It's dangerous, really dangerous. And I always try to challenge myself and understand why um, why it is a good choice and why not um, switching to another JVM language or maybe to go to a different runtime. And I kind of answered it in this chat already. So first of all, Java for me has a huge, huge matur uh, maturity. So uh, it has a proven track record of really a stable, stable runtime environment, which gives you lots of benefits. And we have a very active development currently and really involving to a modern language. And but finally, finally, it's about the know-how. So what skills does your team have? So what skills will your team have maybe in the next 10 years? And so here I'm think Java is a pretty good choice. So maybe if you're in a .NET company and then maybe .NET is a better is a choice. Um, but picking up like, let's say like random technologies that pick up from time to time, for example, like um, uh, Scala was very popular some years. Now we have some legacy Scala code. No one wants to maintain it anymore. Um, for me, if it comes to commercial project and not just toy projects, I would really consider the know-how which is available. I, I agree with you. We have, as, as you said in your slides, we have to find the balance between maturity, features, and support. And Absolutely. there are not a lot of, of, of languages that meet all that. I mean, one of the things that people complain about Java is that sometimes we don't move fast enough or, or we don't get rid of the past fast enough. Those are but... Look at the chat. Look at the chat where people reported what version they are working on. I mean, I think Java's actually moving too fast, to be honest. <laughs> well, we don't need to migrate or, or, or update. I mean, Java 8 is going to be supported until 2030. So... Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, let me see. We have tons of questions. Like, oh my goodness, we, we will have a very, 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 very chatty hangout. Um, but I have another one. Uh, do you have? Oh, do you have plans to upgrade your Cocoa source up to Java up from Java one point five? Will you? Would what will be a good reason for doing that? Mm, you get a Jacoco question. Okay. Okay, currently we have no compelling reason for doing that. I mean, uh, Jacoco is a tool which is used on a huge, huge, um, in many, many projects on a huge variety of platforms. And I mean, um, for, of course, it would be more fun to have Java 8 and have be more language features, no APIs, but this is only the fun for the maintainers of the library like us. And it's not fun for the users that maybe use it in a Java 6 environment currently. But feature-wise, uh, we haven't seen any compelling um, reason to do so. I mean, Chacoco works on Java 17, right? Just the implementation of Chacoco is still compatible to Java 1.5. So, but it could perfectly work on class files with Java uh, 17. I mean, it's still doing its job quite well, if I may add. So, yes. Another question, uh, what are, and this is also something I really want to hear from you. What are the upcoming features that you are looking forward in the next Java versions? Well, okay. Yes. Well, I think, um, I mean, records is something and the, the additions to the language, like um, switch statements, uh, this is something I'm really uh, looking forward, especially records. This is the thing because if you are used to write this enterprise software with the getters and setters, it's like really horrible. And I'm really hope we can get rid of that soon. Yeah, as I said, sorry for making this 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 uh, like commercial, but we also discussed that in the panel. We, we had already the preview, so we were all okay. Perfect. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious about the the panel. I will be there. I will be there. Yeah, no, no, no. Please do join and, and write a lot of questions. Yes, it's with yeah, it's going to be really nice. Uh, well, this is surprising for me. They are asking you if you have any other recommendation for the desktop U, um, graphic UIs. UIs. Um, they started with Java effects. OK. Well, I, I'm the wrong guy to ask here. So we did. Actually, I was leading a group that was for a huge corporation was uh, working on the UI strategy. And uh, the decision was made that we switch to web interfaces and that um, Java will not be the choice of tool for, for, for the user interfaces of the future for that specific enterprise. So um, there's a strong um, trend in this direction. There's lots of know-how, lots of tooling in that direction. And my personal opinion, especially for business software, is that uh, like um, we won't see many Java GUIs in the future anymore. So I think the web will take that part. There is another really interesting question. I One thing I found it's hard to convince people to move up Java versions. It's never seen as worth the effort. It took a long, well, it, any advice? to go with your with admin and say hey we we should upgrade why why it's a business decision i mean i asked the question how long do you want to run the software how long do you want to get developers to maintain the software and if you ask this question seriously and if you ask if you look at the license model of the old java version so if you um, below java 8 and you basically you have two options you pay a lot of money for licenses for updates um, or you update at least to Java 11 to have the free alternative you can use in production. So in the end, it comes all down to money and the ability to execute. And most of the libraries um, you depend on will probably not support, the new versions will not support anymore. Um, the, the old JDK case because they upgrade to Java 8 or maybe even to Java 11. So basically, it's a life cycle question. So if you bother about your product, if you want to maintain it for the next couple of years, please upgrade. If you don't care, but don't ask me to add any features. <laughs> OK, OK, so yes, yes, actually, as you said, it's more about, again, what are the libraries? Who is going to maintain it for how long? What are the vulnerabilities? Is there something that it will make our software faster of the performance or something? I mean, it has to be compelling, compelling reasons at the end of the day, not because it's new. I mean, yes, there are several things outside that are new, but that's not good enough reason. Uh, are you, well, we have another question. Um, are you looking forward to any specific feature in, feature in the next LTS? Nope. I didn't get that. It's the last one. 
Yeah, that's what I already answered. It's basically records and um, uh, okay, yeah, sorry, sorry. Used if they like extra, extra, yeah. But not in the LTS, those are the, <laughs> okay. Actually, with the cadence, we have had a lot of features in the range from 11 to 17. So it's Absolutely. difficult to pinpoint one, but because when I, they ask me a specific question, what version, I'm always like, well, if you think about the accumulated, it's really interesting. But if you think about one, it's difficult to pinpoint. But yes. Absolutely. That's why I'm, you know, I'm working on the Java Almanac website and I try to keep track and kind of try to write them all down. So this also helps me to, to, um, to, uh, to, to keep track of the latest features and understand them. But I don't consider, I mean, there are some of them are nice, but I don't consider them like business critical. Like, like I cannot write the software without a new feature. I, I wouldn't do it. As I said, I'm not a tech fanboy. I really ask what yeah. is the, what is the benefit of that? Well, actually, it's because you have this, you work in this really important system that it's not so easy to say that, ah, let's do it again. I mean, it's huge. You are working with really, really important things that you cannot, like, I, I think your your failure rate should be, like, minimal, like, extreme. Absolutely. Absolutely. Also, we're working here at the railroad. Uh, some behind me, I put some trains behind me. Um, they are used to very different life cycle. I mean, such a train has a life cycle of like 20 or 30 years. And if you as a software developer tell like railroad people, you know what, um, we have, we've just developed the software last year, but we have to rewrite it again this year because new technology and whatever, no one will buy that. Okay, we still have a lot of questions, but one of the earliest one, is there any plugin tool that can be used to analyze what's need to be changed in order to upgrade for one job JDK version to a greater one? Absolutely, absolutely. This comes with the JDK. I mean, the JDK prints, so there's two options. One option is to do like a static analysis. Um, you can look at your class files and your compiled class files and look for, for example, internal API usage. Um, this is with the JDPend tool. This is part of the JDK. You don't need the plugin. You can just run it in the command line on your trust files and you get the result. And the other thing is the dynamic part. Um, you, the, by default, uh, the modern modern JDKs will print a warning on the console. And that's what I told you in the presentation. Really take a look at that. If there's a warning, look for the root cause. Why is a warning? Because someone thought this would be useful to show you the warning. Do not ignore them. Yes. So you get that for free. You get that for free. You don't need a tool. Yeah, actually, there was a question about like, should I, I pay attention to the wording? Yes, I mean, uh, at least to look and know what they are telling you. If you don't have the time to fix it right now, but at least be conscious, that will be my absolutely, very absolutely step I, zero advice. I mean, the point if you ignore, if you decide to ignore warnings, it will bite you. I mean, the sooner the later, it will bite you. Yeah, 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 totally. There is another one that is really interesting. Have you had any production issues in the Red Wheel system with job upgrades or dependent libraries? Production issue that environment could have could have been live or dead. Does that make you feel apprehensive? So have you had any issues with the job upgrades? Of course, we had issues with the Java upgrades, but not in production. This is important. So um, we need safeguards. So that's my typical, this is this conservative approach. So we first go, we upgrade the, the runtime version in production first. And if we build against the old JDK, we can always fall back. And if you have a production system and you do like a, um, you do an update to a new version, um, probably you have tested that for some time. And even if you encounter the problem in production, you can still fall back to the old uh, to the old uh, runtime because your code still is compiled against the old runtime. So that's why if you have a critical system, I really recommend to do the two steps, like have it in production for a couple of months. And once you're very sure that this works, you can also give your developers the new JDK version and, and allow them to use the new features and the new APIs. But then there's no way back. Once you open the gate to use new APIs and use new language features, you cannot backport the whole code base. Yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And, and you release that slide, it's pure gold uh, because it, it points the important things. Like once you, you open the bottle and let the genie out, there's no way to put it in. So you need enough time to test whatever you need to test in all the possible cases. Yes, super important. Absolutely. We have number. Uh, another question. It is, what do you think about using JVM-based languages instead of using Java? Example, Kotlin. There are a lot of improvements in this language that are needed in Java. Um, 
Absolutely. So first of all, um, if you use a different JVM language, you get all the benefits of the JVM. The JVM is a great runtime. So for me, there's no, re no reason not to use another language. But then it's about, um, again, know-how and, and how your team is structured. So if you have like a good Kotlin base, um, and there's a lot of good tools in the meantime, um, Kotlin gives you lots of benefits also in ter times of in terms of safety. Uh, it's a good pick to to go to this to, to this uh, to such a different language. But again, please ask yourself: uh, Are you capable to do that? Do you have the know-how? Do you have the developers, or is it just your personal toy project to learn a new language? Yeah, I agree with you. Well, this room will close in like three minutes, but we still have the hangout, and they can and we can we can um, ask more questions there. Absolutely. So, yes. Thank you very much, Mark. As I was super happy that you accepted to speak here because I was like, you don't go to conference that often. That's yeah, sure, that's sure, yeah. <laughs> it was like a treat, like, yes. But it was my pleasure to be here. And I, I will go to the Hangout and I will yes. also try and your track for the rest of the afternoon and we see in the chat. And yes. I'm happy with the audience to discuss uh, whatever you think about Java. Yes, 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 yes. Let's go there then. Okay, let's go there. Bye bye.